Hello and welcome to Man About Sports for this particular video. We're going to be talking about UFR Champions League draws which took place yesterday because there was a lot of anticipation regarding who's going to be best UFR player and the draws and everything surrounding it. Finally, we have the draws out for this season. Uh, to be very fair, not the most anticipated one in terms of what we expected. It's been already mediocre in terms of draw. Not a lot of exciting groups. There are some at least, but not a lot, like unlike other years. So in that sense, you can say slightly disappointed to start with. Other than that, we are, as always, excited for TFA Champions League, which is going to get underway from September 18th. It is the Champions League week in a couple of weeks. It's going to go on until December. And of course, you're going to have the round of 16 start from Feb. So that's how it happens every football season. And we're back again. Antrik, welcome on the stream. Uh, how are you doing, firstly? And... Uh, how did the draws go for you? Are you like, were you expecting this kind of draws or were you just taken aback with what just happened? Yeah, uh, to be frank, I was expecting uh, this kind of a draw because uh, like like the, there has been a momentary shift in terms of the teams that have qualified. If you, yeah. if you take a look, like the, the there are always the likes of Porto and Benefica and Galatasaray and, you know, the couple of Dutch clubs. But now we've had clubs like Lons and uh, Union Berlin and uh, another club I, I can't uh, so like three four uh, sort of these kind of clubs. Newcastle United so stuff like this so all of this sort of contributes to the fact that what might have been previously considered as a pretty you know yeah. a, a, a star packed UCL sort of uh, on its surface feels like yare yare yeh toh boy but but nah man like all of these teams are here because of a reason because they deserve yeah. to be here they're yeah. probably two of the best teams of Europe and uh, they're gonna compete out and as, as you said, some groups are like, yeah, they're, they're just going to go through. But but the beauty of some of those groups are like, like we have a couple of groups which are tight. And then there are a couple yeah. of groups where you can't have any favorites. So some people are just disregarding that group. But the beauty of those groups is anyone can beat anyone. So, you know, yeah. the, 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 the inter group, basically, I can't remember. It's inter Benefica someone, yeah. if I'm not yeah. wrong. I mean, that's right. such an open group. So, like, people are saying, ah, no, this group is boring. But... Uske boring mein uska maza hai because you know what till the till the match week six you'll yeah. not be able to sort of say ki who's going to qualify who's who's not because look at man city's yeah. group it's something which you saw last year with marseille tottenham i think it was leverkusen who was there in the same group yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a very tight group it came down to the last match day and the last few minutes to exactly. see who's going to really go through yeah, yeah absolutely as i said and as i was pointing towards you that especially Man City ka group. <laughs> so, like, like that's boring for me. That's yeah. boring for me. Yeah, because... that's how we get started. We'll get started straight away then without wasting any yeah. time. We get yeah, into yeah, the group. Yeah. Uh, we'll see who are there. We'll start with the Bayern versus uh, this group as well to start off with. Bayern, Manchester United, Copenhagen. Very interesting group, to be very honest. Uh, because this is a group which we all expected. Uh, not expected in terms of Bayern and Manchester United going to be back in one group. It's, it's You can say it's a historic rivalry. A lot of things goes back. Then you have Galatasaray, who's done yeah. really well in Turkey. Uh, I mean, you can't say they're the best team in, coming from Turkey in recent past, but definitely out there they can compete. Yeah. Copenhagen, a very interesting team in terms of what they can bring about. Uh, they've always done to do upsets, especially away from home. It's never easy to go there and compete in Copenhagen in Denmark. But yeah, uh, you know, you are a United fan, so you know what you have seen this team. You have seen this team mm. right now. What are your initial thoughts about seeing that? Because uh, to be very honest, Bayern Munich is a strong team. And you've already seen what, what they can do in Europe with addition of Kane in it. And then they are Manchester United. Uh, they got off a pretty decent start, you could say, in the Premier League after that loss against Tottenham to come back the way they did. Uh, what are your thoughts about this? Because very iffy yeah. group, you can say. Technically, very iffy group. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, in the most modest sense, I think we are still trying to find our feet. And like, we're here... Uh, the last dip the window and we're still trying to you know pluck some holes and uh get 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 things polished out so and obviously this season like it's it's just showing like just just being a bit off topic but this should be a clear message to UEFA like the number of injuries just at the start of the season this is not a coincidence yeah. one this got to do with the pitches you make everyone play in, in terms of monetizing European football going to yeah. USA and stuff like that once you do that, and then you have no breaks, and then the season starts, and everyone plays six, seven yeah. friendly games. So you know, I mean, this this is a clear sign, especially Real Madrid, Manchester United. Like, like we are genuinely being decimated bit by bit. Like we have players who have sprained their ankles, and generally it's a three, four week injury. 
but it yeah. turns out to be a 10 week 12 week injury because of the fatigue which has been yeah. kicking in but apart from that you know apart from that uh, i think uh, united and by and two you know to be honest uh, since since tushel has taken over it's 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 not really uh, they haven't too found their feet they they just whisked away with the title last season mm-hmm. which was i think their 10th or 11th title so Uh, yeah, whatever that's that title. I mean, yeah, 11, I, mean, I don't want to talk about Bundesliga particularly because it's become one-sided for way too long. You thought yeah. last year was Dortmund's year, but let's just talk about this group. Manchester United, if they fall to against Bayern Munich, if at all they fall to against Man- yeah. Bayern Munich, how tough are the games against Galatasaray and Copenhagen going to be? Because if you drop points away from home, it's not easy to go and play in uh, in Turkey there in Galatasaray's home ground. They've got exactly. one of the most hostile atmospheres. Even Denmark, it's pretty cold. The conditions are pretty hard to go out there to go always to compete in Copenhagen. We've seen the games go a little deep. You don't see massive results in Copenhagen Stadium. That's where you reckon this could be slightly more tricky for Manchester United if, if at all they drop points against Bayern. If they don't, if they are unable to defeat Bayern, then they have to get the six points or nine points on offer against. Yeah, Copenhagen yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, Denmark. this this you know this group really reminds me of the group we had like in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's second season. where we young had PSG. boys group you talking about the young boys at no 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 the, no no the the PSG uh, the PSG oh, yeah. Leipzig and Istanbul Başakşehir kind of group yeah. so like we, we we beat PSG we beat Leipzig which was like unheard of and like uh, we beat PSG in Parc des Princes and we beat Leipzig um, you know i i think it was uh, at at our home only uh, or away i can't remember properly but then we faltered against Başakşehir like who would have thought you know we we lost away f- uh, against them and then we couldn't recover so this group sort of reminds me that that there are two proper heavyweights in the group but then the other two ones are not you know pushovers like by any means it's not it's not the the, the team which is red star belgrade yeah. or whatever they're called in yeah. europe it's it's not that evali team near it's not any any new kind of a team they are two seasoned campaigners of the champions yeah. league so yeah. i think going going to galatasaray and especially how they've been building their team over the last two years I'm happy Mata is gone now. I wouldn't. I I really love the guy. I wouldn't have wanted to face him. <laughs> Mata won Mata, so he's left the yeah. club. They have Wilfred Zah. They have now signed Ekardi, Mauro Ekardi. Yeah. They've they've signed a couple of great uh, Turkish talents as well. And they they yeah. they've also have uh, Lucas Torreira, uh, the ex Arsenal mm-hmm. player. So I mean, yeah. they they have a decently uh, you know well performing squad. And as and you know what, except Man United. all the rest three teams are champions of their country so yeah. that's i mean uh, that there you go so. actually very interesting way in which they've come in let's go to group b now uh sevilla was the first one to get that pot in because obviously they were the europa league uh, champions and they had to get that pot one uh, when they came into pot one and arsenal interestingly have gone to this and psv there and lons i mean psv has been doing extremely well in the eredivisie sevilla yeah. But the Sevilla, the thing is, in group stage, they never do well in Champions League, and they prefer going to Europa League, and they they are pretty happy doing that, and they are very happy doing that. Go to Europa League, win the Europa League, and do whatever they want to do. Arsenal, for me, a lot of people are not regarding Arsenal because of their past history in the Champions League. Let's be very honest; a lot of these youngsters are going to have their first ever Champions League experience with Arsenal over here. But let's talk about Saka. Let's talk about you know Odegaard is going to be back in Champions League after a long time. A lot of these players, and that is very exciting because Arsenal, it is unlike any other Arsenal of the past. They're coming back to Champions League after almost close to eight years, and this is a moment for them to really, really step up. Absolutely, and how time flies when you're uh, you know, people say time stays still, but I think in football time flies when you're rock bottom. Imagine Arsenal wasn't in Champions League. It almost feels like it's been like two, three years, but it's been eight years. So you know you could yeah. really slip out. being a top club if you don't really make it to these competitions but yeah arsenal are back and i think all of that partially goes out of the window for them because of the way they're playing you know the the, the kind of football they're playing this is what i really look at rather than the results because results yeah. on a consistent basis 99% of the times only come when you play the right kind of football or you have a clear strategy so i think that's that and i think for these players to settle in into the champions league kind of atmosphere i think this is the perfect group this is a group where an Every team would provide just the competition for them, but yeah. not like a Bayern or a PSG that they have. Yeah, I would expect you know. Arsenal to top the group. You know, it shouldn't yeah. be a tough thing for Arsenal. Exactly, to but it, it also won't be a pushover kind of a thing. So it'll, it'll provide them with just the kind of um, sort of uh, yeah. uh, match, match. I'd say yeah. sharpness, yeah. Champions League yeah. sharpness. But also, they they have a similar problem. They are lacking in squad depth because of the ever so decreasing numbers due to the injuries. Yeah. 
So it'll be and also with uh, Arteta, really being stubborn in terms of playing Kai Havertz up top. The fans are not very pleased with that. <laughs> it's really restricting the flow of play. And you saw the game against Fulham as well, where yeah. Arsenal wasn't looking good. And if you go back to Europa League last season against like Sporting, European competitions in Arsenal don't really go well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you know what? Uh, these European competitions, I don't know what it's about them. And I'm a firm believer history plays such a big part. Like as Mourinho Absolutely. said, football heritage. Like like it's it's it, it has something there. You know, like like many a times we've seen like a team which is not so very good in the pr- uh, present moment. But they have they have that heritage of the Champions League of yeah. European football. They are yeah. outclass uh, the, the the great present day team. So I think yeah. you know what like like take the example of Man City. How much they had to struggle to strive yeah. hard. Like they had to actually be perfect. Like they had to win yeah. the treble to actually lift the Champions League. Yeah. That's how hard it is. So yeah, yeah man. Like like there is something. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I was just going to pinpoint you on Manchester City as well. I mean, it came so close so many years. The history part is massive, and that's where we're going to talk about Group C and where a Champions League heritage is there. Champions League winning history lies right there with Real Madrid. Even if they don't do well in the league, but when it comes to Champions League, making it a top four is not really a tough thing for this team. Even though they don't have a number nine, they have a lot of injuries, but you still back the Real Madrid team to do well in Champions League because of the history factor being massive there. Absolutely, and they 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 just play in a way they have certain a certain belief, a certain uh, way, a certain aura about them in the Champions League that that whatever whatever task, whatever daunting task you give them, they they are ready to climb. And you know, um, many a times we've seen they've started so slow. Remember, many a times they've not even topped their group when they were the firm favorites. They uh, these years they won the Champions League. They've come second in the groups like Napoli with Napoli and. Uh, yeah. uh, Pittsburgh and uh, all of the uh, so-called yeah. mediocre, but when it's yeah. knockout time, when it's time to really show off, they are yeah. there and they are blasting everyone. So yeah, Absolutely. man, I, I, this is not really a, a task for them right now. The main Champions League for them begins post the quarterfinals because that Absolutely. is something. <laughs> Truly, and and you know, just talking about Napoli as well. I mean, of course, after Spalletti's departure, you know, there are a lot of people who don't rate Napoli, but they've got the team. I mean, you have to say Napoli and Real Madrid are the favourites, but you still can't write off Union Berlin. I mean, the oh, story has been impeccable, isn't it? I mean, let's just appreciate them to make it to the Champions League. It's it's a big deal to make it to the Champions League. And now they're going to be competing in some of the European heritage or the European royalty, as they would rightly say it. Against Real Madrid, against Napoli, against Braga. Braga is not the greatest name over there, but Napoli, Real Madrid and Union Berlin, you have to say, if at all Napoli falters or even if Real Madrid falters, which I don't expect them to, Union Berlin is right up there with a the shout to qualify in round of 16. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? They're signing Leonardo Bonucci. What a signing for them. You know, what an underdog yeah. signing for them. He provides tons of experience, tons of leadership. Yeah. Probably he'll go in, into one of the leadership roles right away. And yeah. you know, that it, it, it is these players that, that help these clubs make the next step now. Because obviously, they, they, they don't have the silverware right now. So, they could yeah. they could use the quote-unquote Saudi kind of strategy for the next three, four years. You know, get all of those older players, some of the older players yeah. in. Try to build a foundation. Try to build a leadership core around them yeah. and building the young players around them. And fantastic signing and fantastic experience for them. I almost really? call them, you know, I was talking somewhere else. I almost call them, you know, the Nepal. The Nepal of the Asia Cup. The kind of that, you know, a, a bigger version of that. And you know they, they'd be they'd be looking to enjoy. The I hope they're not the Nepal of Asia Cup because all they're gonna have. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. In a, in an elevated form because they are much more competitive yeah. and much more Absolutely. out there than what Nepal is. In I mean, it's never easy. And I mean, we don't we disregard the away matches in European competitions so often that it's really tough to go out and play away matches, especially in countries like Germany, in Oof. Turkey, in Denmark, because it's extremely hard. You know, the fans can be hostile over there, and Union Berlin. The fans are so attached to the club that this is their moment. Finally, Champions League. And this is where this is what they waited for all their lives. You know, to see their team in Champions League. And I think Real Madrid and Napoli are the favorites still to go through. Uh, and Napoli's new coach, which is Claudio Fiox, uh, you know, he's got a he's got a point to prove to carry on what Spalletti has left off for them and for Osim and Quaresquelia and Ira Zeliski, you know, it's time for them to really up their game and to go yet another season and compete in all three competitions. And that's why from Group C. Let's go to Group B as you know, we already did throw some light in it earlier on. This looks like boxers of the same weight fighting against each other because you can't really separate them. Inter, Benfica, Real Sociedad, Salzburg, 
you can say Inter and Benfica are slightly more higher in terms of yeah. their recent performance. Benfica have done well. Inter, the Champions League finalists, they've got a right team to go out there and compete. But let's be very honest, any team can pull off any result and anybody can qualify from this group. Absolutely. And as you, as you rightly mentioned, it, it gives off vibes of that uh, Bayer Leverkusen uh, or the uh, Tottenham kind of group which, which was there. So it's absolutely fantastic to uh, look at a group like this, Real Sociedad. Obviously, uh, you know, un, uh, some somehow an underdog team from San Sebastian, as always. But they they, they managed to do well with the likes of Oyatabal and the other Spanish lads out there. And yeah. Salzburg, obviously, again, you could maybe rate them down here and there. But I mean, Salzburg, the, the kind of football the, the whole uh, RB brand plays, you know, it's yeah. it's it, it's guaranteed entertainment there, and it's guaranteed uh, upsets, a couple of upsets here and there. Yeah. So I'd really be looking forward to this group. I, you know, I'd not, to be honest, watch all the matches if I had the option. Yeah. But I'd really look at the group group table the every now and then. Be awake till two thirty to watch this group. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Probably, you know, Group D Kesat will have a Group B K game, so I would probably watch that. But I'd, I'd really keep an eye on the scores and all of the group standings and stuff because it's going to go down to the wire. I'll probably tune into the sixth match week because that is where I know. Everything would be on stake in this group. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's where this group is very interesting. Let's go to the next group very quickly. Uh, I mean, it's a it's another group where you can see things can go either way. Lazio, mm-hmm. uh, Feyenoord, Atletico, Atletico Madrid, Celtic. I mean, you have to say Lazio has been doing extremely well. And Lazio is one team to watch out for alongside a team like Feyenoord as well. Because if you look at Lazio and Feyenoord, you can't really separate a lot. Because Feyenoord has got crazy amount of... Uh, youngsters coming in from out coming up the rank and that's what that's what they've done and if you look you know if we could just say Sanio Jimenez or if you have to just say uh, Ali Reza that's his name that the player yeah, who was yeah, really yeah. impressive in the last season I mean these lads are good I mean these lads can really pull up an upset especially in their home ground they can be pretty impressive and when you talk about Lazio I mean let's not forget someone like someone like Ciro Immobile I mean these lads can really go out there and really go out there and step up the gas whenever it needs to be and Lazio is one team, again, real tough going on and playing away from home. And Atletico Madrid, this season, you're seeing a slight bit of resurgence in the team. There's a lot of cohesiveness. I mean, trying to keep all the egos aside, you know, players are really stepping up. I mean, you have to say, Diego Simeone is again finding a touch of magic again in whatever he's touching. So, yeah, I have to say another interesting group alongside Celtic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And... Uh... Celtic, uh, you know, it's it's always been a been a curse for them in the Champions League. Like, they they absolutely run riot in the Scottish Premier League Premiership, yeah. whatever you call it. But then it's 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 really a too big of a step up for them uh, in the Champions League. I would have really loved to see Ange Postecoglou here for a, for another season to see how he yeah. would have done at Celtic. But no, it wasn't to be. Brendan Rodgers is back there, yeah. so that's happy days for him. He can stat pad some trophies there but it's it's going to be interesting again as to how they step up and as you said Lazio you know they've, they've signed a good player I think in uh, Matteo Guendouzi uh, who has uh, transferred from Marseille if I'm not wrong uh, I, I really like them he was at Arsenal he obviously had some uh, ego issues as they say in football yeah so Skiba just he couldn't really make it there but a great player nonetheless and Atletico Atletico seems to be their Atletico best you know I, I just saw one of their stats they had 41 percent possession and they won yeah. seven minutes so I think yes. that is typical Atletico. Seven nil. Obviously not the score line, but but the way of football. So yeah, it's they they're, they're somehow suited for Champions League, aren't they? And and what like yeah. Simeone and I, I read one of those quotes wherein he said, yeah, I got offered uh, three or two offers from Saudi, but yeah, it was a no-brainer for me. I mean, Absolutely. he's just he's just an old school stuck in this new world of football, yeah. man. And how we love him for that. How we love him. Absolutely. For that. I personally think this group is going to fight out between Lazio, Atletico and uh, Feyenoord. I mean, Celtic is good, but then I still think Lazio is going to be a team to challenge yeah. with. They've got you know, Kamara, they've got Romagnoli, yeah. they've got Immobile, Pedro. I mean, it's it's an aging squad with Luca Pellegrini and these guys can actually go out there and maybe pull something out. So that's why it's going to be tough competition between these two. But Atletico, I still believe, will edge past and Atletico are the favorites, unlike last time. But now let's go to the group which we all wanted to talk about for the longest period of time. It is a group of death of for this season. It is Paris Saint Germain, Dortmund, AC Milan, and Newcastle United. I mean, how do you separate the teams? One of the best groups. You can see all the heavy meets put together in one group and equal footing. You know, everybody starts on equal footing here. Newcastle in form, Paris Saint Germain, a new look Paris Saint Germain under Louis, Louis Enrique, 
Dortmund, a new reborn, you no know, Dortmund, as every season, they like to blood at the <laughs> youngsters. A good start for them in the Bundesliga. AC Milan once again go, had a very good run in the last time Champions League, making it to the semi final. And Newcastle United, I mean, nothing much to say about them now. But how, how big is this group? This is a group we all are anticipating for. And Group F fixtures are going to be most watching. It's going to be amazing. It's, it's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm so happy. You know, like I can't wait for the game at, at San Siro as well as at St. James's. Newcastle versus Milan. What yeah. a proper Champions League game does that sound like? Like, Abel, you'd, you'd relate. Like, we've been fans yeah. and... It's, like, it's, a, it's been a classic. These, yeah, yeah. We, we've been a victim of these new age Champions League games and we have only heard folklores and tales of all of these Champions League games. And like, Finally, it's one Champions League game that I'm really excited about. And that not necessarily would go on. Either of these teams would go on to win the whole thing. But it just screams heritage. It just screams tradition and Champions League. So... Really excited. I mean, Sandro Tonali for him to come back. You know, everyone really knows how much ever Newcastle fans or the Newcastle admin tries to show that he really wants to be here. Well, he would. He would feel settled in. But his first choice wasn't Newcastle. He wanted to stay at Milan and everyone knows that. That's why the ginormous bid of 70-odd million uh, it, it really took to, to transfer him out of there. So, he's going he's gonna to have his homecoming. So yeah. would uh, the, the, the Dortmund lad, which is Christian Pulisic, who hasn't yeah. really found himself since he has left uh, the German yeah. uh, city. So it's going to be uh, a homecoming for him as well. I mean, it's it's it's, it's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? And, yeah. And, uh, are, yeah, we, yeah. are we underplaying uh, Paris Saint Germain over here? It's a new look team. They've got Gonzalo Ramos. They've got Dembele right there. They've got they've got Skriniar in their team now. You have to say this is a team which is being underplayed because of the past of what has happened in the last four mm -hmm. seasons. Just... A lot of names not being there could be the right foil for them to really step up and go a notch high because Louis Enrique is a demanding coach and he really doesn't either he's a no-nonsense coach he doesn't really accept bullshit and he really like to take the team forward where he'll be the leader of the team and egos can sit back and they can actually take a back seat and let's also oh, not forget to add Asensio as well into this team absolutely i was about to say that you know i'm, I'm not taking them for granted for once like because people might have this perception of psg psg purana but you know what they have had, like, they have done something. Like, for, for the longest time, I think they've gone, like, we'd put our cash bag aside. We'd put, put all of our royalty aside. If we, have, if we have sort of appointed this manager, we've got to give it all to him, you know. You, we're not on his head from day one, you know. We're ready to sack you till here, you know. They have gone on. They have given him the full freedom. He said, he really said it out and he actually did it, that my actions would tell you which players I want here and which players I don't. And Neymar was sold two days later. However it was, if he really wanted Neymar here, he would have had him. He would have had him because it's Louis Enrique. They've Louis done it was Messi as well. You know, he was exactly. a treble winning manager with Neymar and Messi. And he exactly. had two of both of them. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I mean, Messi, I can still understand. Maybe he just wanted to leave and stuff. But Neymar, maybe too. But he made it clear. He made it clear with Verratti, who's ready to go to Saudi Arabia, Qatar, UAE, anywhere. But he's, he's not playing in Europe or in, uh, you know, a PSG. So, that's that. And then he's gone on. He's made some statement signings with the likes of Usman Dembele. He wants him. Marco Asensio. That's a proper, uh, you know, a Louis Enrique signing. And I really read Louis Enrique. I really, really do. I think he was pretty, pretty, pretty unlucky to get out of uh, the Spanish job there. And I think yeah. Spain were like too short-sighted uh, with him. Uh, that's my yeah. opinion. Because he, I he, thought he, with he that Spanish team, Spain would have done is. wonders if you had given him a long rope. But exactly. I don't know. I mean, I was pretty upset as well when he got that Spanish sacking. To be very honest, he took that young team in Euros to semifinals. Exactly. And they really displayed to the world that even against Italy, the who went on to become eventual champion, they were the better team on that day in the park. Yeah, I, I think I think he suffered from his own sort of you know he made some bold decisions of leaving out some yeah. very top players. He did yeah. that and he did well, to be honest. And he but let's be honest, when he's a system manager. He's not a player's manager. He picks exactly. up players who can fit into the system. Exactly. Absolutely. And and I, I'm really excited. You know, of course, Ligue 1 is no challenge here and there. But it, it's going to really be important to see how they feature in this Champions League. And especially this group. And I expect them to go all guns blazing. I do, I do. Absolutely. That's about it from this uh, group of death. I still think Newcastle, Dortmund, Milan, I, I would say Paris. And Newcastle to go through. I just have a funny feeling about Newcastle because they've started off well. They've got the team to do it. Uh, they're building on, you know, they're building on. Let's go to Group Z. Uh, I mean, Manchester City, Leipzig, Krevena, Zvetsta, <laughs> Young Boys. I mean, 
what do we talk about them? I mean, there's nothing much to talk. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this group? Leipzig and Manchester City meet every now and then in Champions League now. Man, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared as to how quickly. I was checking the UCL top scorers yesterday, and uh, you know uh, the 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 eleventh is I think Filippo Inzaghi with forty six goals, and Haaland already is thirty five. And I think he would cross and uh, he would cross the fifty mark in the group stage itself. That that's just my feeling, you know. And I I think and that would actually take him seventh or eighth uh, level with Thierry Henry, and that's just scary. Like imagine, like just I'm I'm not even trying to you know. Uh, oversell this or something like with this uh, red star belgrade and uh, uh, young boys like that's they, not red star belgrade that is cremena's z no 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 uh, they, they are red star belgrade uh, they've just named this uh, oh they the changed the name no they oh, yeah yeah they correct correct name. correct i forgot correct yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah they were history man come on they won the <laughs> champions league yeah exactly uh, so uh, so you know four games there and if man city starts a proper team <laughs> That's 20 goals for City, and you can imagine but how many of them. But it's tough to play in uh, Belgrade, though. It's a tough ground oh, to go out there. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> it's a haunting place. Let me be very honest. <laughs> I've seen some of the games there. They're very hostile fans. Pretty haunting. Not, not taking it very easy, you know. You know half, half, half of their squad, half of their squad works as as a freelancing electric electricians. They they work as freelancing electricians. So, koi plumber. Yeah, they've got and history and ultimately. That's that's what matters. Oh, Young boys, interesting team. They've. Pulled up results here and there once in a while. But yeah, I, I really don't rate this group very highly, to be honest. Group G is just Leipzig and Manchester City, who's definitely right up there with the shout. And yeah. I know Leipzig and Manchester City meet too often in Champions League these days. I don't know. It's just like written on the side. It was, it was like Stockton and Madrid for last three to four seasons. Yeah, you know? yeah, They're yeah. bound to be in one group. Uh, let's go to the next group. is Group H. Barcelona, Porto. Shakhtar and Antwerp. I mean, Antwerp Royal. I mean, what a team. Uh, they've got the wartime FC. They've got Porto, who has done decently well in Portugal, and Barcelona. Finally, you think Barcelona can make it out of the group? Yeah, I think, I think. Uh, coffee, coffee, coffee. Easy, Gardia. Uh, by the luck lady of UEFA for them. Like, come on, now get it past. Like, we don't want you slipping into the Europa League too often now. So, I think it's, it's really going to be a race for uh, the second and third place between... Uh, I yeah, I, I think Porto, Shakhtar, and Antwerp. Obviously, Antwerp start as the bottom uh, sort of yeah. favorites, if I if I'm allowed to say that. But but yeah, I, I think uh, Antwerp can uh, do a surprise there and there. So it's going to really be interesting to see how Shakhtar and Porto you know face each other. Those six points are really going to decide who makes it to the Champions League round of 16 and in in, uh, in both of them. So yeah, for them, uh, it's it's it's, it's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Porto is not an easy team to beat at all because. Uh, you've seen with Pepe there in the middle of the park, he's still got it, you know. Porto can be very, very interesting. They maintain a very low block. They can be very annoying at times, and especially when you're playing as top and top opposition, keeping a very low block. So that's where this group, I think for the second place, as you rightly mentioned, and if Barcelona fall to zero there, then they'll be under some tremendous pressure because the recent past not really made it. So that pressure is there for these young team to really take it to the next level. And uh, letting go of Ansu Fati, and now I don't know if today they're going to sign Howard Felix or not. Because today, as the transfer window ticks past, they will have to make a signing because they let go of Ansu Fati. Very interesting to let go, let let him go on loan to Brighton. But yeah, that's about it from us. I still think Barcelona and Porto will make it out of the group with Manchester City and Leipzig yeah. in Group G and Group H. These are the two boring groups in the entire draw. I felt personally because there's nothing much to talk about it from these two groups. I'm not disrespecting any team, but then. If at all things can happen as it's football, anything can happen on that particular day. But, you know, as I rightly mentioned, uh, this is what it is. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, I mean, we'll be back very soon with live streams and more of these updates very, very soon in terms of uh, what in cricket and football and also live coverage of football as well when it comes to Premier League week, week reviews. Have a good time, all of you. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel because that is where we are going to be bringing you all the exciting content. Keep subscribed and click on the bell icon as well. Check out our course with Mad About Sports for all the latest things, especially when it comes to if you're an aspiring analyst, stepping into the role of analytics in football or cricket. This could be a stepping stone with Mad About Sports. And also do not forget to check out our Instagram page where we'll be giving daily updates on sports and everything else which you really need to know. Have a good time, all of you. See you all very soon. Bye-bye.